So another technique that we can use to avoid all these complications is called closed addressing. And there, we're going to do something that we've never done before in this class. We're going to take an array and a bunch of linked lists and put them together in a single data structure. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to draw the array up and down this time. And I'm still going to say it's going to be 0 to 25. This is for A, B, C, whatever it is, like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to have these attached to linked lists. And if, let's say, this particular linked list has nothing in it, this would point to null, for example, like that. Now, look what happens. When we hash the banana and we're told to put it over here, we just add it to the end of this list. These are other words that we've already had stored over here. When Barry comes along, we get the same exact hash code. We just add it to the end of this list here. I think you will agree with me that collision resolution is much easier here because really there aren't any collisions. We just add it to the end of a list. Now, to see if you really understood what I've been talking about so far today, I need you to spend a couple of minutes with your partner to talk about the Don side of this approach versus the other approach. This, by the way, is also sometimes called separate chaining. Okay, what's bad about it? No random access. We're losing some speed. What would be the worst case scenario here, and what would the what would the access turn into in that worst case scenario? Yes, sir. If all of them ended up in the same row, we would end up with one giant link list, and then we would end up with O of n access. You see that? So here, as is most of the time true, we need to make sure that our hash code distributes the entries as evenly as possible. We also want to make this array as large as we can handle within some reasonable amount of memory being used, right? And that way, we want to keep these link lists as short as possible. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so the array list, it looks good on paper, but underneath, it's really just as slow as pretty much anything. The array list. Also, the, the problem is going to be is you don't know ahead of time how big it's going to be, so you're going to have to constantly be adding or deleting, and then you're going to end up having to copy everything over in order to make it bigger. But you could use array lists here. If you really were concerned about performance, though, instead of using an array list or a linked list, you could use a different structure here. That would make it a little bit more complicated, but that would be even better. See if you can talk to your partner and figure out what could you replace the linked list with to get better access speeds. What could you replace these linked lists with for improved performance if you're worried about getting back to approaching linear speeds for access? You could replace them with binary search trees. You could see that such a structure with an array connected to binary search trees would be even more complicated, so we typically don't do that. Usually we just have this array, and then we just have these linked lists, and we depend on our hashing function to spread out the entries evenly, and we make the array fairly large. We typically wouldn't have just 26 entries. We'd have several hundred or several thousand. So in order to keep these, uh, these linked lists as small as possible. And if we do those things, we can't quite guarantee O of K access, but on average, we can get towards O of K access. And for most government work, it's going to be close enough. And so our performance here with these hash tables is going to be really, really good in those cases.